Monday, June 5th. Uh, can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Irie Steed? Here. Ms. Cobo? Here. Ms. Cohen? Here. Mr. Each is out of town? Ms. Marie Estime Irvin? Ms. Geimer? Present. Mr. McDermott? Present. Dr. Millian? Here. Dr. Moise had confirmed, so I assume he'll come later. Mr. Reynolds? Here. Mr. Robillard? Here. And Mr. Sanchez also had confirmed, so I'm assuming he'll be coming in late. We have quorum, sir. Okay. All right. Can we um, all uh, stand for the pledge of allegiance? Can we have a motion to approve the minutes of April 24th and May 15th? Second. 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 Any no corrections? Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. We move on to our action items. Agenda number one. Yes. Okay. Good, after, uh, good evening, uh, Rasha Kamo, CRA Director. Um, I, m I had mentioned to you, uh, I think about January, February, that the CRA Executive Director uh, and city manager Larry Spring had given me the task to create a standard operating procedures manual for the CRA and to also review, evaluate, and update our grant guidelines. He actually had given me 60 days, which I think we met that deadline, yay. Um, and so we've been working very hard on these items. Um, unfortunately, our attorney's not here today um, to walk you through it, so I'll, I'll do that myself. The other part about this is this needs to be approved by the advisory committee and the board because this is the document that we will be using moving forward right. to you know, run the, the CRA agency. Um, first, before I start, I'd like to introduce, reintroduce you to my intern, Mr. Noah Jacobs. He, I had introduced him to a few months back. Um, he's been working with us part-time and this was, his prime, this was his project to work with me on and to do research and other CRAs and, and through the city ordinances and so on and so forth so we can create this document and also working on the grants guidelines that we'll be presenting to you. So essentially for the SOP, um, what you have in front of you, if you go through the table of content, which is page two, it's pretty much, and I call it an in case I die, I win the lotto. Anybody can step into my shoes and run the CRA without having to do any you know, heavy lifting. As you recall, when we first came on, Arthur Sori and I and Terry, we had to go back, um, go through files and try to understand what grants were out, what, what liabilities were out, and what the process was from the previous um, administration. So with this document, it's, it, you can read it at your leisure, but it pretty much explains what it is to run a CRA. What are we guided by? How were we created? What is our Bible, which is the amended plan? Mm -hmm. um, what state statutes do we, we answer to? And also the, you know, the interlocal cooperative agreement that we have with the city and the county, how is it governed? How is the advisory committee and the CRA board um, managed? What are our responsibilities? Um, how do you run an office, obviously, which is very important to make sure that we provide mm -hmm. great customer mm -hmm. service and so on. Mm -hmm. um, the other part about it is how do we actually create a budget? How do we run the agency? What are the things that are done behind the scenes that you're not really aware of that we need to make sure that we do? We're either bound by state statute or we're bound by the county and city interlocal agreement, like for instance, the annual report. Mm -hmm. What is it that you need to have in the annual report to present to the board so we can always meet our requirements to, to our uh, funders? So, also I would like to apologize for the amount of trees that I had to um, destroy today. Unfortunately, our printer um, died on us, so we had to rush somewhere else to make other copies, and unfortunately we were not able to make double-sided copies. So that's why some of you have you know, double the size of 
everyone else. Again, I apologize for it. So anyway, pretty much this is, like I said, an operating procedures manual for anybody who has to pay attention. There are some requirements for, for instance, website requirements for, for state statute that we have to do. There are other requirements in terms of the budget, when does it have to be posted, and so on and so forth. So it, it, it creates a, a, let's say, a, a legacy. And as we continue, as we create other uh, programs, and as we create other you know, grants, capital projects, or anything like that, we will make sure that we'll include it. And also, it helps us moving forward. For instance, as you recall, the legislature was going to change some of our um, some of our reporting requirements and so on and so forth. This helps whoever is here with me or after me to know where to look for the information, how to incorporate it, and how to report it back to the advisory committee and the and the CRA board to make sure that we are meeting our requirements and so on and so forth. So for your uh, pleasure, this is the new CRA Standard Operating Procedures Manual. Um, uh, you know, whenever, like I said, you'd like to read it, just, you know, at your leisure. I have also attached, you know, we have exhibits. I have a lot of samples and exhibits. I've created how do you review an application, how do we, you know, close out and how do we monitor and if they're out of compliance, what are we obligated legally to do to make sure that we don't miss any steps. Um, unless you have any questions, um, comments or concerns. Okay, any comments or concerns from anyone? Huh? Yes. Uh, I move. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. I, I No, it was posted last week when it we was sent it to. The, uh, it's posted on the internet. On the internet. Okay, so have you looked at it? This is one thing. Have we looked at it? Have you read it? Well, I've looked at it. I've looked at it. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thank All right. You. Moving on to item number two. All right, this is the um, the grants guidelines. Um, as I mentioned, we were tasked to evaluate our past grants. As you recall, we had two grants. One was the beautification for fifteen thousand dollars with no match requirement, and two was the fifty fifty up to eighty thousand for rehab. Right. Um, based on our past experiences with. Um, grant requests and the cost of construction. As you recall, we've had to deal with sev several grantees coming back to us asking for additional funds and, and so on and so forth. So what we did is we evaluated the going rate of construction and what other CREs are offering in terms of, of grant guidelines and, and so on to help come with a, a baseline. So the, the first thing I did was I We've changed the wording a little bit, but we're proposing the beautification and enhancement grant to, enha uh, to increase it from 15,000 to 25,000 to allow for proper improvements. Um, like I said, in the past, we've always had to request a waiver from the advisory committee and the board to 20, 25,000 because again, the cost of construction, when this was created the first time, we, we never changed it to, to that. Um, the second one is the rehabilitation grant. We would like to increase it from 80,000 to 100,000 with the same 50-50 match requirement. Um, what we did there is the grants guidelines, they were, we clarified a little bit more the grantee requirement and to make sure they understand on the outset what their obligations are. Again, going back to past grantees and where we're working with them now to monitor them, they were not paying attention or realizing what they're really obligated to do, meaning like once we do this and you pass inspection, you can't change the the things that we we fixed without coming back to us for permission. And if you had an obligation to us in terms of performance or employment requirement, they were required to submit reports and, and things like that, and they were not clear on those things. So what we did is we, we made sure that we, we repackaged the grant guidelines and we made it easier and simpler for them to understand what it is that they're obligated to do for these grants. Um, the third grant, this one was more of a creation. It's the business attraction and expansion grant. This is for new businesses moving into the CRA. 
um, or an existing business wishing to expand. So let's say you right now you have a doctor's office, you're at 750 square feet, you're at capacity, you want to expand to 1500 square feet. So you wanna lease the space next to you to, to grow. If that space did not have that pre-existing use, it was just a regular office retail, you're gonna incur some additional impact fee costs, some, some demo work, and so on and so forth. So this would allow for a business, a new business to move into the CRA, the downtown and all these targeted areas that we're, we're focusing on, and also for a business who wishes to expand um, in square footage <coughs> because they're at capacity and they're, they're gonna be um, hiring more people. The, the, for this, for the business, only for the business attraction grant guidelines are we now asking to allow for partial rent reimbursement during the renovations. Normally when a new business comes in, it takes at least six months for renovations, dealing with the permitting and so on and so forth. They do, they are paying rent to the landlord while this is happening and they're not making any money, they're not bringing any, any business. So it is, a, it is an attractive, um, what can I say, an incentive for new businesses because that's the first question they ask you. Like if I sign a lease for five years as you asked me and I'm going through renovations, I'm still paying rent but you're not allowing it to be part of the reimbursement. So what we're proposing is half the rent um, for the first six months only of the renovation, because by then you need to be done uh, when you're reno re your renovations. Also to allow for purchase of large equipment um, to enhance the business. And when I say large equipment, I mean you know the, the walk-in freezer, those items that are staying with the property, but they are it is an equipment that originally as you recall, when I present to you a grant, I've always asked you to waive certain parts of it to allow for that business. Um, the Alaska Coffee Roasting, for instance, I had asked you to waive the equipment requirement to allow for that. So those are the things that we're, we're cleaning up in the guidelines that allows for, for these, these things. The fourth grant that we created is the Capacity Building and Retention Grant. That's for existing mom and pop businesses that need technical assistance, training, purchase of an equipment that will enhance their business. This is, we, we mirrored it with the county's mom and pop uh, program that they offer. This one's about for $7,500. Again, it's for a business, I always use it as an example, if you're an existing business right now, but you'd like to be on Uber Eats, for instance. But you need that equipment, you need that training to know how to operate the POS system, the website, so that you can get the order so you can actually increase your, your sales. Or if you're a restaurant and now you want to expand into bakery, but you need that large, um, huge batter machinery that you need, um, this would allow you to do that. And it's again for mom and pop businesses. So this is for a business that's in the CRA. You have to have been in business for a year. Um, it's a small business. You can't be a franchise or part of a national chain and you can't have more than five employees. So again, it's targeted for existing businesses that are here. They may not need the rehab grant, they may not need the facade grant, but they need that technical assistance to help them enhance um, their business. I did uh, four focus groups in the area um, to talk to uh, businesses and business owners to understand what they were looking for. I had people who said they wanted to be able to have a scholarship or a training program so their employee can go get that, their, that certificate they need so they can be allowed to do more work or become full time and, and so on and so forth. Um, another one was in advertising and marketing, being able to have a social media program or page so they could properly advertise and things like that. So those are the, the, the things that I heard when we did the focus group. So those are the four grants um, that we've created. Again, the packets are in your hand. You can, you can go through it. A couple of the things that we did in the original grant, for instance, industrial use, light industrial use, and industrial buildings were not allowed. Um, in this day and age where now you're looking at uh, machinery operate, ma operating machinery for manufacturing, if we were to bring in an employer who wants to buy or lease a large building to do those type of things, they wouldn't be able to you know, get a grant to do any type of rehab or facade or anything like that. So um, we felt that was something that we needed to update. It still does not allow for religious, um, religious uses or, or churches. It doesn't allow for adult bookstores and it doesn't allow for standalone liquor stores as before. Okay, so now the county is okay with all these adjustments? I've actually sent it to them and, and they might 
cop mirror some of their new grant guidelines for mm -hmm. their other CRAs as part of this. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Um, but most importantly, because this is the body that dictates it, the advisory committee and the CRA board dictates it. This has been reviewed by our attorney, who unfortunately is not here. Um, and he's, he's fine with every single thing. He just found one typo that, uh, that is on the title that nobody caught, which is it says standard of operating procedures as opposed to standard operating procedures. So he caught that typo at the last minute. The I apologize for it. The one talked about the back mm -hmm. of manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, what would that fall under? It, it would be a business attraction grant if it's okay. a new business that's coming in. Mm -hmm. Again, it's to bring in right. new businesses. Right. Um, but we don't offer it. If you had an existing, we do have an industrial area right now, and it is in the CRA geographic boundary, but because our current guidelines doesn't allow for any form of industrial building or industrial uses, it, you, they're not eligible for any grants. Um, the, the, uh, the, the, grant, the last grant, the one for... Uh, Capacity building? For helping people with, with training and things like that. Mm -hmm. Do we... Would we get involved in setting up forces or, or, or groups of people or... We're doing, not, we're doing, no, we're yeah. doing that in partnership with uh, mm -hmm. the city's economic development uh, department, Sam Blatt. Um, as you know, he's already done several workshops. Um, there was a graduation most recently. Um, even on the application, it asks, do you want to have additional um, courses, you know, workshop development for business owners? Um, it offers those type of things. It depends on what it is that they're asking for in terms of, let's say they're, they're a, a business that um, they're a, C a small CPA firm and they're looking for the scholarship opportunity to give their employee the access to a training for a certificate to, so they can increase. They already know what they're doing pretty much, whereas we have a, 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 another business who now wants to expand and do additional use. Apart from having a variety store, they want to do another service to add to what it is that they're offering. Like that we would sort of check cashing or the one the money transfer. Yeah, we don't want, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but, okay. Anyway, um, something that took some technical expertise. Yeah, something right? that required technical expertise. Um, we would Excellent. definitely, Excellent. we're going to always encourage them to go to those workshops that Sam is scheduling, but we're going to make sure that whatever they're asking for they show that they can do it. And this one actually will have a more frequent monitoring into it. I mean, that means that we have to actually monitor them at least every three months because we have to show a quantifiable improvement in the business as a result. So if you're a restaurant and we got you the POS system, you were trained, your staff and so on, in, in three to six months when I come back, your sales numbers need to show that you've increased mm -hmm. because you're actually using the service that we provided. So, okay. For the, that's it for the commercial guidelines, and okay. I'll talk about the other ones when we get to that point. Any questions? No questions. I, I think this is something we've we've already been doing a lot of these things. Yeah. Well, we, well, up till now, si, as Rasha mentioned, we've, we've, doing, we've been doing waivers, waivers on some right. waivers on some of these things, and this will cut out the additional, uh, you know, issues with that. Yeah, and, and another thing I, I, I forgot to mention, which is very important, I did not put it in my cover memo, but um, when I briefed the, the Marin Council, Councilman Desjardins made a very good point, and it is in the guidelines. Any grant that's uh, within the 100000 and up, it's there that every effort will be made to hire North Miami residents. Mm -hmm. They have to make, you know, make that effort. I understand if it's a specialized skill, you may not have that person here, but you need to make that effort to hire to make the job available to North Miami residents. And then he wanted that in there. And that was a, a good point, and it's included in the guidelines. Okay. All right. Do we want to do make a motion on, on no, this particular piece, or do you want to wait, no, you can, you can wait till the end? Or do you want to? No, for the commercial one, if you can vote for the commercial, okay. and then we'll go the rest. All right, have a motion? Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. All right, and we're going to okay. move on to residential. Oh, no, no, sir. Um, yeah. Item B, North, North Miami CRA events and enhancing city events. Okay. All right. Um, this is out of the, apart from the CRA plan, but the branding of the downtown mm -hmm. that, you know, mm -hmm. we did the research and uh, 
RMA had done the presentation. Out of that, as you can see, our logo changed and we're working on the full campaign. This uh, part of the recommendation was that the CRA needed to help enhance certain city events like Jazz at Mocha, uh, the Mayor's Quarterly Luncheon, because that actually attracts people from outside of the city right. and provides a benefit. Um, now, looking at future events, um, we, we do generally get requests from people asking us to fund an event. And so we, again, we formalized it. This is how we will determine and evaluate if it's a, a if it brings value to the CRA's goals. Um, also, this is very helpful because, um, as you recall, a, a few years back, there was a, a, a attorney general, it's not the attorney, the auditor general made some comments about the Hallandale Beach CRA a few, right. a few years back about how they were doing these things and nothing was formalized. This is a way for us to not only make sure that whatever it is that we're, we're funding, like Jazz at Mocha, to enhance it, is working with, Jazz at Mocha is from 8 to, let's say, 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Anything that we do, we'll be enhancing it, which means we're looking at events and activities from 5 to 8, and then after, when Jazz at Mocha is done, 9, 30, to 11 to allow for people to come and, and to experience the city to bring in new vendors or, or whatever. So again, this just formalizes it. It makes sure that if you're, if you're applying for a grant, whether you're a city department or an outside person that's interested in, in, in creating an event for the CRA to fund, you need to make sure that you are providing these. And I even created an evaluation criteria that makes sure that we are meeting our goals as per the plan and we have tangible um, results. We can see that, okay, Jazz at Mocha brings in 300. Because we've enhanced it now, you're bringing 500, 600 people a month versus just the 300. Right. Or you're bringing a different type of, of crowd. So this is what this does. The next one is, and as you can see, I've created the application um, and so on. The next one is the events and promotions. This is for the, and th that's another thing that they had talked about. It was actually in our budget to fund, but we didn't do anything with it. This is funding the Nomad, the antique furniture stores, or working through the North Miami Chamber of Commerce for an event that would actually bring, again, additional people to the downtown. So it funds, let's say, from your event is 2000 it's up to $1,000. We'll reimburse you up to $1,000 because you're bringing in, you're, you're, you're having an event for an author, you're having an event for a designer or right. some sort, and you're bringing in their base to our downtown. Again, these were all things that were mentioned in the downtown um, branding and marketing plan, mm -hmm. um, but it was, we, we felt that we needed to formalize it to make sure that there is a way to evaluate, the CRA is proper, appropriately credited for the events that we're doing and so on and so forth. So these are, and, and one of the questions I got from one of the council people is like, well, why are you only doing it for downtown? Right now, the downtown corridor is the one that is more the priority for activation. But as we're activating the arts and entertainment district further down or 7th Avenue or West Dixie, as we're activating these corridors, we will also include them in that to allow for those type of events and activities. It's helping, for instance, um, one of the, the designers, uh, Modi, he was having an event last week um, where he invited an, uh, a designer mm -hmm. and, and so on and so forth. But making that available to the general public, making sure that there's enough and it's properly advertised that we are sponsoring this to bring that clientele to come to the other stores is, is what we wanted to do. So again, this is formalizing these programs that were created. Lastly, the grand opening and reopening. Um, you've gone to two of them already, Captain Jim's and Cafe Creme. These are for grantees that have successfully <coughs> completed their projects and they're open. And for instance, Alaska Coffee Roasting will be the next one. Um, once they've completed it, they're open for <coughs> business, they have their CUs, their BTRs, we will help them pay for the grand opening to make sure that they invite the advisory committee, the CRA board, their district commissioners, and the general public. And that helps to defray the cost to maybe, for instance, Captain Jim's had hired a PR person to do all those um, articles that were in the paper. Um, Mocha Ca um, Cafe Creme had used it for entertainment, the photographer, the film, and then the, the refreshments. 
Um, so again, this is for them to be able to tell the, the community and the world that they're open for business, thanks to the CRA, the CRA gets the credit, and we're able to attend. This yeah, is to formalize it. Yeah. It is 2.5% of the grants up to 5,000, no more than 5,000. Yeah. So it's 2.5% of, of the, the total grant amount that they got. All right, and ooh, let me get some water. The last one, item E, is the TIF incentive. This is specifically for large-scale development projects. Right? I actually worked on this language when I was in the city of North Miami Beach for their North Miami Beach CRA, and they've already act used it um, for the Cambria Hotel that's oh, going yeah. up. Yeah. So they, they pretty much, as you recall, our funding really comes from the increment of the tax revenue and, and so on and so forth. Although we are supposed to reimburse the county and now we reimburse the city a portion, what we're telling you is as an investor, if you're about to build a project and you can show us that it'll bring um, $2 million of net new taxable revenue on the property, we can negotiate between 25 to 50% of your taxes of that revenue back to you for a certain number of years to pay for the financing of that project. So uh, your project was Right now, your property was appraised at a million. Your project is going to be 10 stories. It's slated to be a $20 million project. So let's say the increment would be 19 million. Once you get your final CO, it's only based on the final CO. Once you get your final CO and the property appraiser has appraised the, pro the property and say, yes, it's at this value now, okay, you will, we will refund you either 20, up to between 25 and 50% of that for a certain number of years. It's the tax rebate. Uh, well, but we can't say tax rebate. I'm sorry. So it's, it's a, it, the, my, the it's county a, attorney says- It's a tax don't, incentive. It's a tax incentive. Okay. So the, the, the strings that are attached to it, of course, is for the developer, um, he gets the money on the back end. He still has to go to the bank, still has to get financing. This is them coming and saying, I'd like to make a reservation of these revenue funds projected for the next few years and it comes to you, they present to you what their idea is and so on and so forth and you and the board approve it. They don't see it until after the final CEO is done and they have to pay the taxes. So we can't refund you if you didn't pay your taxes. So if you're a delinquent, you don't get anything. It's also tied to you having your site plan approval within 12 months and you pulling your building permit within 12 months after that within the two years. Um, if you don't, then you lose that. You can come back and reapply, but it's pretty much a way for them to make that reservation to say, I am projecting that my project will be this amount. I'm gonna, pro I'm proposing to do, you know, retail parking apartments or offices and so on and so forth. This project is projected to bring in this amount and I'd like to make a reservation of a certain percentage of that to pay back to the bank for the financing. The other part of this, this is, like I said, the tax increment um, portion. The other part of it is for infrastructure. Let's say you don't want, you don't need me to give you the TIF for it, but you would like us to pay for the infrastructure because the infrastructure around the property will not, will, is not compatible, is not appropriate for that kind of large scale development. You will also come to us and make that request for us to make it a grant where we provide the infrastructure redevelopment around the property for that. So it's the same It's the same setup, the way we have it, if you go through the language again, if you go through it, it's the same setup. You still have to make a request. Um, the, the, the requirement is very extensive in the sense of like, you have to show that you've already done a, a similar project. Um, you have- Yeah, I saw that. that was, yeah, yeah. I, 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 going through it when, and talking to other, other you know people, and like I said, I worked on this particular language with our attorney for the North Miami Beach CRA, and I know how well it worked. Um, <coughs> so the only thing is, um, it's from 25% to 50%, no more than 50%, unless the guideline gets changed to allow for more than 50%. Um, and also the infrastructure. It would be the same type of um, item. So if they don't get their building permit within the two years, they automatically lose the, the opportunity and they would have to come back to you and reapply for a reservation. <laughs> okay. All right, so those are the, um, those are now formally all the guidelines that were created. 
um, if you can, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, if not, you can entertain okay. a motion. Um, do we have any comments or concerns? Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? <laughs> Well, technically, as soon as soon as the board approves it, uh, uh, which is June thirteenth, and actually these applicants that are sitting here <laughs> are expecting, you know, are, have applied with the old application, but they're expecting the new application to take effect before their item. Okay. So. Uh, with regard to like the tomorrow thing, mm -hmm. for those those businesses going there, kind of thing is within the city, or could another group do an event that brings it into the city, or um, the event that's going to add whatever value they think they would. They, if they're, you mean like the promoter type thing? Yeah. yeah, if they are the promoter for the events and enhancements, one, yes, mm -hmm. they can be from elsewhere. It's not a problem. But the, the issue is they, they, what they're doing is driving people to, North to downtown Miami. North Miami. North Miami. Yeah. And, you know, um, it, it asks, you know, like, do you have police? Do you have the experience to do this? And so on and so forth to make sure it's going to be a successful mm -hmm. event. It's not going to be like two people showing up and things like that. Mm -hmm. But if they have, if they're from the outside, it's fine. Okay. okay, any other thoughts? Okay, we have a motion, a second, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. okay, thank you. Um, the next item, item three, is for the funding of the single family rehab program. Um, as you know, in our interlocal agreement with the county, 10% um, of our budget should go towards housing initiatives. Right. Um, this was in the budget that was approved, the amended budget that was approved this past February by you and the board, and that the line item was $700,000. Um, we've been working with the city's um, housing department, and they are presenting at the June 13th meeting a simplified housing guidelines. What they were using before, because they were mandated through CDBG and mm -hmm. HUD, you know, talking about the size of this tree, their guidelines was thicker than yeah. that. So now what they're presenting to the board is a simplified way for, for people to apply and, and, and so on and so forth. And it's still going to be the CDGB, correct? Well, no. They're this one, they're funding, them? well, they're funding for this guideline that's going to be approved in, at the June 13th mm -hmm. is the simplified version. My understanding is those funds are coming from the general fund. It's okay. not tied to the CDBG. The okay. CDBG, they still got to follow yeah, it's a different, their federal. Different animal. Yeah, different animal. This one is a simpler one, and our plan calls for supporting the city initiatives, and also that allows us for better efficiency and streamlining so we don't have to act, have to actually hire staffing and, and so on and so forth. Um, also, in, your, in, in our budget that you had approved, you, we did fund a half of a housing person in the city's housing department, and that's what this person's going to be overseeing. So this is to um, fund, to, to allow us to transfer the $700,000 that was already approved in our budget, um, in the CRA's budget, to the city's housing program. Um, the caveat to that, obviously, is the grantees all have to be in the CRA geographic boundaries. That's not a problem. They know that. They have to provide all the, the documentations, pictures, and everything that is required for us to meet our requirement with the county and the annual report. Um, they obviously have to give credit to the CRA for these projects. Uh, and also, part of our interlocal agreement, one of our benchmarks was we needed to do uh, rehab of 70 homes by 2024. So the priority will be start, you know, doing those projects, uh, the rehab projects, before we even look at, um, in the coming years, first-time home buying kind of programs to bring those back. But right now, since our, our we had three minimum requirements, which was the parking garage, the rehab of 70 single-family housing units, and redevelopment of the 7th Avenue corridor, this is one of the priorities. Um, we're starting late for the year, as you can realize, because the year is ending September 30th, but they are ready. Once the guidelines are approved, I'm pretty sure they're going to start advertising it and gearing up to start the work. So okay. this is just you. Um, if you've read the memo that I provided, right. the attorney will have the resolution for the mayor and council, the CRA board, I apologize, to approve, to say, yes, we can transfer this funds to the city's housing department to implement the single family rehab program. Okay, any questions? Do I, do I hear a motion? Move up. Second. 
It's their guidelines now is at twenty thousand. Um, actually, when we were looking, I thought it was going to be twenty five thousand, but no, it's twenty thousand, and it'll it calls for putting a lien on the property for like the three years, so they won't sell it, and, and so on. So that that's about it. And we it will be the for the CRA dollars, it'll be the heavy lifting more than a beautification. It'll be a real rehab, impact mm -hmm. windows, AC. ADA compliance for handicapped and elderly people and things like that. And then some painting as, as you're improving the, the, the windows, uh, like if you're doing construction work, but the primary part will not be really beautification, it'll be the rehab so that we can make an impact. The qualification criteria for that, I don't know, in, in terms of the housing department, is that through directly through them or mm -hmm. you establish that? No, as it's straight through the city's housing guidelines. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. I'm aye. sorry. I'm Opposed? sorry. Who made the motion? I didn't listen. Um, I believe Mary did. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I Dr. Moore did and Mary seconded Mary it. And, uh, sorry. <laughs> okay. That's, that's exactly it. So okay. we're going to move on to item, item three. number. Well, we just did four. item three. We're in item four now. Four. I'm sorry. Four. Yes, yes. Okay. okay, this item, Ms. Geimer was very... <laughs> reminded me I had brought this item to you uh, a couple of months back. This is the Christian Academy um, daycare on West Dixie. What happened is I did present it to you, you did approve it, and then she requested to pull the item off. So it was not, it didn't go to the CRA board. Um, the reason being is at the time she, her application was not complete. She hadn't gotten the AC quote. So we opted to wait and she got all her quotes now for the full. Uh, rehab and also with the new grant guidelines and so on and so forth they made sense to not transition and and have to uh, move around all right so um, and for your uh, review is the Christian Academy that petits enfants located at 14150 West Dixie Highway it is a gold, gold seal accredited licensed child care for 50 for 55 children um, she has four full-time and one part-time early childhood trained staff she needed to rehab um, the daycare. I think she had mentioned she had some water damage last time she was here, and she needs to renovate it um, as soon as possible. Um, she's required by DCF to, to do that. Um, so the total amount of the, from the lowest bidded amount was 50,999. Um, the violations on the property <coughs> um, have been satisfied and all the permits were closed out. Um, the staff recommends that is if the board, the CRA board approves the new guidelines, um, so this would be under the enhancement grant of $25,000 with no match. Um, she is, Ms. Francois is here again to speak with you. <coughs> okay. But, and she's responsible for the, anything over the grant amount, obviously. Um, but it would be under the new grant guidelines of the enhancement grant program. All right. Uh, well, you already said everything, <laughs> and uh, I would really appreciate it, just like I said before, if you could help me really um, speed up the process, because uh, summer is already here, and the daycare is kind of half and half full, and some of the rooms are empty. If uh, you would consider, please, to okay. help me speed up the process. Okay, your name and address for uh, the record? My name is Marie Francois, and I'm the director for Christian Academy de Petits Enfants, located at uh, 14150 West Dixie Highway. And I've been in that location for a little bit over 22 years doing the same business. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, okay. Long time. Yeah, and, and Rasha, we already approved this one. Well, right? yes, you had approved it the last time, yeah. but again, it didn't okay. have the AC as the scope, right. as part of the scope, and since now we're updating the guidelines, All I right. just needed to bring it back to you. Any there are pictures of the existing, it's gonna yeah. cover the flooring and, and okay. the AC and everything else. All right, okay, I think we, ha we have a motion from Dr. Millian to second from Mary Irvin. Um, any questions? No. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank yeah, Rasha, one, one quick, one, yeah. One, one quick thing, if I might. Mm -hmm. You know, I noticed that there's like a $10,000 difference in the, in the three quotes. Do you remember 
we were going to try and find somebody on staff or what have you who mm -hmm. was going. Remember, we had everybody mm -hmm. coming back for right. additional add-ons mm -hmm. and that kind of thing, and we were going to find somebody who would be able to take a look and re and find say, yeah, they may be ten thousand dollars, but they're good history, good work. They so um, yes, we do have somebody who does that with us, and they actually worked with one of our applicants the, that, that we're going to be talking to. 10000 is not that huge of a different gap considering the others. However, this company, because I checked them, they do work for the city's um, C CPMD department. Oh, okay. And um, I did talk to the staff about it. I'm like, I find it, you know, do we, so we low. Did and, and she did state that he they do very good work. They do quality work. He does all the work himself, and he does not subcontract. Okay. Did, any weren't we going to get somebody, a professional... Um, contractor to be on staff or a consultant we with staff. We do have somebody like that as a consultant to help us with the costs. It? It's um, the, the company is called Clue, City Land Use Experts. Okay. Um, they helped with, um, let me give you an example of the Billy's Pub. Okay. Um, Cause they had some challenges. Right. Um, still have some challenges with their grant, but they helped them out at the county. Um, they are, they helped them the, the new applicants with right. their grant, uh, their bids, and also to make sure, more importantly, that the costs were actually, you know, covered. Like right. everything was in there, the impact fees, the plumbing, the electrical, yeah. everything was actually there so they don't come back. Yeah, and, th and, then, and then the other thing about it is the way we have the guidelines now, and, and we tell everybody, we make it so simple. If you don't provide us with the information so that we can properly vet mm -hmm. who you're dealing with, then the responsibility is on you, and we can't afford to have this our our investment fail. Right. So, yeah, we do have somebody who, who works okay, on, on those okay. things. All right. All right. So I guess we're going to move on now to uh, number five. All right, number five, nail bar of Chinatown. Um, Thank you, ma'am. Miss Brittany Morrison is right here. Um, she um, has the space at 775 Northwest 119th Street. She used to be, she still has it, but she used to have the Liberty Tax um, business at that location. And as you know, tax season is seasonal, uh, tax is seasonal type of business. So she's relocating that somewhere else. And now she's op she would like to open up a nail bar at that location. That's at the YDB shop, right? The YDB shop right, 119th Street. There's a KFC. It's a huge. Oh yeah. It's across yeah. from the Dr. Moise's yeah. clinic, okay. across All from right. the 7-Eleven. Yeah. Um, and so Miss Miss Brittany Morrison is here as the applicant. She's yeah. requesting um, funds to renovate the facility. At, of course, like I said, it was a tax office before. Now, if you're converting it into a nail bar, she needs. Um, she would like to apply to get funds to deal with the plumbing, the exhaust system, and all those other things that are necessary to, to, to do what she needs to do. I have to say that um, she did, I told her about the impact fees. She went to the county herself. She went and got them to tell her exactly how much it would cost for the change of use. Mm -hmm. um, um, in terms of getting all the, doing her homework and getting all the data that she needed, she provided um, all that she needed. Um, the construction cost is its uh, lowest one is seventy nine thousand eight fifty six, mm -hmm. and the signage is at two thousand six hundred and seventy. Um, so for a total project cost of eighty two thousand five hundred and twenty six, um, obviously this is under the the uh, business attraction grant, which uh, again calls for fifty percent uh, match. So the fifty percent of this would be forty one thousand two hundred sixty three dollars and, and fifty cents. Um, as you can see in the pictures, she's provided what the design and she's already started working on her floor plan with the electrical and so on and so forth um so miss Brittany morrison is here if you have any questions um Brittany, you want to introduce yourself hi uh, everyone my name is Brittany morrison um i've been at that location for about five years now and it's at the gateway of the future of chinatown so um, moving forward, the tax business will no longer serve um, the need as we're moving forward. And we do not have a nail bar in the area or at that a, um, a modern nail salon, a modern nail salon. So this will not only employ um, other students that are locally in school. There's a school here that offers training, technical school. So what we're going to do is we're going to work with them to bring students yeah. over that can practice and um, 
serve the community at a, at a affordable so price, like the same price they charge at the school. So that's part of the internship program, as well as providing um, something new to the community. Okay. Any questions from anybody? Um, which, which technical school is this? There's actually one on 125th Street, right next to Mocha. It's a beauty school right there. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. You're yeah, asking? Right. Who's the landlord? Own? Oh, yeah. okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's another one in Hialeah, but it's not, it's not. So close. Exactly, this is convenient. Have you done this before? Um, as far as businesses, no. As far as businesses, I come from a family. Everybody is in the, in the owns a business. Um, and this is just a new a new business that I'm going into. Yeah. Once you have one business, you can have any business as long as you employ correctly and but manage. But you obviously it still says nail bar, so you've been there for some time. Oh no 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 no, no, no. that's she's the just rendering. Just in a new oh, name. That's just that's to what she's yes. proposing to do. Okay. Yes yes yes. So you really so this is sort of like a whole new venture for you. Yes. This is a new venture. Yes. Yes. Are you the sole owner of the business? Are yes. You have a partner no, I'm the sole owner of the tax franchise, which will be locating um, about two blocks away, and then the tax, and then the nail bar. Okay. Which will also generate revenue year round versus two months out of the year. Um, that's also been a concern for me because the tax business, as you know, generates revenue mainly two months. Um, I've gotten the insurance license and tried to put other services there. Uh, my rent is about $3,000 a month, and uh, it just hasn't been feasible. And something that's fresh and new, especially with Chinatown coming, would be a nail bar, especially since there's not one in that plaza. Right. And how many square feet do you have? Uh, about a thousand. Is three thousand a month is your rent? Yeah. Okay. Very and high. And what is space? Like? I've been there for five years. Yeah, I've been there for five years. <laughs> but then once again, it's at the corridor, and I have great visibility. So. Okay. And parking. Is there any other questions? Yeah. Let's say once this is approved, and you're talking about uh, projection here. How do you see this going with the first three months of operation? You have um, I haven't. I haven't even opened yet. I'm ready to open the second one in um, Uptown. So as far as uh, you know, Uptown is the next corridor from Chinatown. Uptown, uh, Midtown. Um, I think it's going to be fabulous. It's going to be something new. Uh, we, I think, our plans. We have seven chairs, which is pretty decent. And with the concept with nail bar, we're not selling liquor or anything. It's just um, normally when you go to a nail salon, there's horizontal chairs. This will be one vertical long table, so it gives you that bar feeling. Oh, okay. But it's not a it's not a bar or anything like that. Oh, okay. I mean, try and do mimosas if we can. I don't know. <laughs> Five o'clock happy hour. Uh, assuming uh, things goes um, uh, go very well, mm -hmm. uh, one thousand square feet is not a lot of a lot of space. Right. If you want to expand, uh, what do you do? Um, I've already been working on that. I spoke to the guy next to me. He this plaza particularly has three uh, ninety nine cent stores, and uh, so we have the Dollar General, we have the ninety nine cent store next to me, and then on the corner next to Black and White Barbershop, there's another Dollar store. Um, the dollar store that's next to me currently, I spoke to him about his lease ending and me taking over and all this. So this is something that's in the works. I'm already planning on that. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, my, I, I think you can do a lot of nails in a thousand square feet. You know, do it. I mean, you know, I mean, it's like, <laughs> you can turn them oh over. Oh, my God. Yeah. Okay. Um, if not any questions, do I hear a motion? Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, everyone. All right. Last um, but not least is the Descargo Brewing Company. Um, I think I've mentioned it to you, like, I think at this point, like about a year ago, maybe, right? Or, or less. We've been talking about Sam and I. We've been talking to several breweries, a uh, vodka distillery. Company, and um, we've been working. So our first applicant um, for the brewery is the Scarborough Brewery Company, and I have the owners Manny and Danny. I pronounced your last name. I'm going to massacre it. I'm sorry. All right, Hannes, Janice. I apologize. I knew I was going to massacre it. Um, anyway, um, we've been working with them. Um, for 
like I said, a while. One of the issues was obviously working on the Arts and Entertainment District. I don't think, I think we mentioned it a few times, but I don't think anybody remembers or visualizes where it is. Um, in, a, in 2007, the city had zoned the area where Kung Fu Connection used to be, where that, mm -hmm. that um, storage, where the train, the supposed train station and all that stuff is supposed to happen. That area was zoned an Arts and Entertainment District. It's pretty much warehouses for tile and body shops and so on and so forth. Um, and we, uh, the CRA going through, you know, and with the planning department, we, we, we see the, the opportunity to capitalize on it because it's already been zoned for it. It allows for those type of uses, um, manufacturing pretty much, and serving of beers and so on and so forth. Um, the property that they are going to be leasing from You'll be hearing a lot um, about it. It's a 27,000 square foot warehouse that was recently bought um, by this real estate company. And what they've done, and we've met several times, is they are a parceling it. Um, so Descargar is, is, is the first brewery. Um, they're renting 2,800 square feet of it. Um, they're gonna have a three barrel, I'll let them speak the technical aspect of it because I, I don't speak beer that much. Um, but they will have a beer garden. They are going to have seating for 60. And then here's the, here's the funny thing. They don't cook or serve food. What they do is they work with local restaurants for the delivery and or work with a food truck to be there to provide that service. Um, so they, they are about the tasting. They are about the selling uh, of, of the beer. They were at the Nomi Brewfest. And most recently this weekend, they won an award that they're going to be talking about. They won first uh, People's Choice Award and second place Judges Award for through a, a brew fest. So speaking of who they are, let me go through the technical aspect of it. Um, the Scarga Brewery is going to be producing um, beer with a Central and South American and Caribbean flair flavor. Um, they will be leasing the space for 2,800 square feet. The property owner has signed already on the application to allow them to apply. Um, they're gonna have seating for um, 60, like I said. Um, they're gonna have a tasting room and, and they're gonna be working with local restaurants and possibly a food truck to be there to provide that service. Um, there are no violations on the property. The total cost of the project, um, he, they have provided all the, the paperwork and, and the, the information what is at 275,851 with the new grant guidelines if it is a, when it, once it's approved by the board would require a 50 percent match um, up to $150,000 um, they are requesting that you consider waiving the 50 percent match to allow a 6337 or 6040 match um, because when we went through it uh, again like I said, it's a warehouse and it has um, tile and body shops. The change of use, working on with the county, the impact fees for the change of use is going to be very large. Uh, we've already talked to the property owner about covering some of it, even though that we, we would allow for some of, uh, of it, a lot of the impact fee cost is gonna eat up more of the hard construction costs that they would need. And that's why they're asking how, how for much that. Do you estimate the it's at the minimum of $40,000 on their end without the property owner because you're changing the use. Again, with the county, it has nothing to do with the city or anything like that. Miami-Dade County, in, um, for Durham, water, sewer, they have an impact fee requirement. Um, if you're changing from office to doctor's office, it's this amount. If you're changing that to a restaurant or a bar, it's higher because they estimate you're gonna be doing more of the waste, um, so that's how they, they do it. And this is for, again, 2,800 square feet. Um, I'm surprised it's not more, from my experience, it takes up large to build a thousand dollars. Well, it's probably gonna be for the, when the whole building, when all the other businesses come in, it'll probably end up being that amount, but for that space, for the 2,800 square feet, again, understanding that when, when I spoke with the property owner, we recommended that they cover the impact fee from what it is now to retail, and then they will do from retail to the brewery. Okay. So. Danny, you want to come up and introduce yourself and uh, tell us a little bit? 
Hello, everybody. How are you guys doing? Great. <laughs> uh, I'm Manny. I am one of the co-founders. I'm sorry? The address. address. The address. Address. address to the property or my personal address? Either one. Either okay. One. Uh, 2925 Lincoln Street, and that's in Hollywood. Um, uh, we, I am one of the co-founders of the Skagra Brewing Company. Uh, we've been doing this now for about six years. We decided to go start to entertain the, the fact of going professional about three years ago. Um, we have won several awards in the pro amateur level, um, taking a lot of first place votes, a lot of gold ribbons, uh, a lot of medals. And we decided to pursue going professional. And what's happened in the industry uh, as of the last seven years is that a lot of home brewers uh, have decided that because you're making better beer than what you see out there to open up their own breweries and the success has been incredible. Um, as of right now, you're looking at a, a double digit increase every single year in craft beer and more specifically, uh, nationally, there's a 93% uh, success rate uh, within the craft beer industry. And within Florida, since 2013, you're looking at a 99% success rate. That's unprecedented. But Florida is the fastest growing craft beer state um, right now. Um, we are slated to have another 53 breweries open up by the end of the year this year in the state of Florida. And it's still ranked all the way at 43 in breweries per capita. Um, so we have decided to kind of join this growth. Um, we recently, like Russia mentioned, we recently won another uh, award this last weekend. Uh, we considered it our last official homebrew competition because we are going to be going pro. Um, and we just want to bring our flavors to the city of North Miami, be the first brewery in North Miami, uh, put us on the map per se, and create another tourist destination for people to come in. And so the other part of it is uh, we look at it from the point of view of if we can be a seed that's planted within that district and within the city of North Miami to create growth, growth and bring in revenue dollars through, uh, through not just the taxes but uh, through uh, tourism, then we want to be a big part of that. Okay. Any, uh, any oh, um, your lease is set. You've already leased the property. And well, we have a letter of intent with the landlord. Uh, we are set for a five-year lease with a five-year renew and an additional five-year after that. Um, we are looking for a forever home. You know, breweries don't tend to move from where they are. That right. becomes our forever home. Uh, our, the, the issue we're going to run into um, is going to be how quickly we're going to outgrow our four walls. And that's, that's a problem that almost every single brewery sees. Um, breweries in South Florida have seen a growth within the one year. The average has been three times their capacity in one single year. What happens is that breweries initially don't have the capital to go big right away. Mm -hmm. So they do what they can, but then they see themselves grow so quickly, then they kind of see themselves say, okay, how do we do this? How do we grow within our four walls so that we're able to meet the demand? And so it's a great problem to have. Mm -hmm. It's still an issue uh, because you want to grow as quickly as the demand is there. Now you don't want to grow too, too fast, but you want to grow within your demand. And so uh, we are looking within the building as well with our landlords and already looking at other areas where we can expand within those, uh, within that warehouse uh, um, parcel, that parcel warehouse area, um, so that we catch it before it comes. Because we've already seen with our friends that have opened up breweries in South Florida that they've run into the same exact issue. Whether it's 10,000 square feet of space or 20,000 square feet of space, they outgrow it very quickly. Mm -hmm. And so they're having to or outsource their beer someplace else, what's called contract in the industry, um, which decreases your margins, but at least you're getting your product out there that brings people into your brewery. Or they're having to just grow taller within, excuse me, taller within their four walls. And so, yeah. Okay. So Anybody um, have any questions? I just wanted to add, oh. in addition to um, to what um, Manny just said, the, the, the fact that it allows for a partnership or relationship with the, with the restaurants in the area as an additional incentive, a business mm -hmm. client base for them. 
also, as um, the chairman had reminded me, um, there's a cidery. Is that is that even English? There's cidery, a cidery. Cidery meadery. A cidery meadery. <laughs> that's going to be moving. In, they, they make cider, so you put yeah. cider. They're going to be moving also a, as a neighbor. Um, I have another one. I have the vodka distillery um, company as well um, from New York. So there's several of these that are moving into that location that's going to allow for a destination. A destination. Right. Very, um, very exciting. So, very exciting. Um, yeah, so um, that's about Any it. Any other questions? Yes. The um, total cost of the project is $275,000. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, for the construction, it's only sixty-two. Correct. Is the rest of it, is it equipment or what's, what's? Equipment's a big portion of it. The impact fees as well take a big chunk of it as well. That eats up a lot into the budget. Um, but yeah, the the construction, you know, breweries in general are very industrial in in the look and feel. Now we're gonna take a little bit of that and polish it up so that it's a little more inviting. In South Florida, it just can't be a destination place in a warehouse. You gotta make it a little bit of a draw as well. So we're gonna do some things to really kind of enhance the look without really putting a lot of that money up front. I mean, you can get reclaimed wood, you can find different things to make it look great um, without spending that overhead. And so that's why the construction cost is minimal uh, rather than looking at it. I mean, I think the construction the cost is about the same as the equipment cost. And that's yeah. really where the bread and butter is going as far as money is. It's the equipment. Yeah. Uh, were you at the uh, at the MOCA? On we were at the MOCA, the Russian uh, yes. art show. Uh, we were there, we presented. We're also committed to uh, kick off the Spanish Heritage Month coming in September 7th. And we're also uh, committed to closing it off um, as one of the main sponsors on October 7th as well. And it, it goes hand in hand with our brewery. We get inspiration from the cultures of Central South America and the Caribbean as far as our flavor profiles are concerned. Uh, so it was a no brainer for us. And the intention of our brewery as a whole is to really be invested in the community. We want to do as much as we can and be as much of the fabric of the growth of the community as possible. Um, I grew up in this neighborhood. I no longer live here, but I grew up in this neighborhood. One of our brothers still lives in North Miami. And so there's a there's an emotional attachment as well to see this through. Okay. I'm not a beer drinker, but I did taste your beer. It was great. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, any further questions? I have one question. Manny, the stats you were giving about increases in volume and number of breweries that are opening in Florida and all that, where does that come from? Where is it the Brewers Association is the legal lobbying uh, um, uh, guild for all breweries uh, in the United States. Um, all those numbers can be found on the at the uh, Brewers Association website. Uh, there's also the Florida's Brewers Guild. Um, that is the lobbying interest for craft breweries in the state of Florida. You can find a lot of that data there as well. And of course, I mean, there's so many articles written right now about craft beer and how booming the business is. is and how there's really so much room for everybody for growth. Um, you know, before Prohibition, there were 4,700 breweries in the United States. You can literally walk to a brewery from your home. Uh, Prohibition destroyed that. And then these bigger breweries came in and didn't let the little guys grow. It wasn't until recently where you started to see the flourishing of local uh, attachments to these breweries. And so, you know, we we just want to be a part of that growth. Okay. Exciting, man. Thank you. Very Thank exciting. You. Uh, definitely something we uh, need to expand in this area. A nice destination. And the more destination points we can create in the city, the better the city is as a whole. That's for sure. So, um, do I hear a motion to approve? So approved. Okay, a second. 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 Okay, um, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Almost done. Almost done. Okay. Um, a few seconds. Do we have any, I know we don't have, do you have anything from our city attorney or? No, um, the only item I have under the executive director's report is um, there is an ethics training um, here on um, June 29th at 6.20 p.m. in the council chambers. It'll be done by the county um, ethics okay. a agency. And as, as a reminder, part of the interlocal agreement is that all advisory board members, board members, executive staff attend mm -hmm. a, a, an ethics training um, 
to be, you know, okay. familiar with the rules and regulations and what's ethical and what's not ethical. So if you can pencil um, your calendars, if not, um, got it written we down. will. We I will send you a flyer, a reminder. But if you can uh, see if you can attend, they don't usually have them that often, um, especially here. Um, I think at one point they were doing. They're going to do one like in the, in another like Bay Harbor, but it was not related to the uh, ethics training that we needed. Um, so um, they have limited schedules. So if you can make it, it's again June 29th at 6:20 p.m. Um, and I will make sure that yes, don't ask me. I don't know why, but it's 6:20 p.m., not 6:30. 6:20 here in the council chambers. Um, the I'm sorry. About an hour and change. No. Two hours. I do four hours, eight hours. Yeah. Yeah, no, two hours. Mr. Robillard has a last time. I don't know if it was last time. One of the, uh, how do we get follow-up updates on items that we say we will pass uh, conditionally in mm -hmm. New Jersey should something happen? Last time there was this HOA issue that uh, there was one of the, the fires, mm -hmm. and then we said uh, we approved contingency and whatnot. How do we do a follow-up on that? <coughs> well, maybe you can make that part of a monthly report, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. any follow any is. I, I, when she provides the insurance, which will be in the next couple of weeks, and she's not even open yeah, well yet, that's what I'm saying. Maybe, uh, maybe part of our agenda can be a follow-up for anything of that, that sort. Yeah? I, I, whenever, whenever I can, necessary. I will yeah. provide it. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. Um, any public comments? No? Oh, I see Terry Henley's in the audience. Thanks for coming, Terry. Yeah. Um, all right, so do I hear a motion to adjourn? I so move. Pardon? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all in favor say aye. 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 Thanks. Aye.